Brick Maniacs, welcome back to Sorry. another episode here on Brick Mania TV. We are at the designer's desk of Cody Osell, and today we're going to be talking about our all new A6M50 World War II Japanese. Are you glad that that's right there? Yeah, I'm glad that I had to read it upside down, though. So <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, welcome to my it. desk. It's the desk of Cody Osell. Welcome to my mess. Yes. Um, this is what my brain looks like, too. It does. It does. <laughs> where do you want to begin, Cody? Uh, where do we always begin? With some history? Some history. Let's do it. So I guess we'll start with Brickmania history. So Dan made the last Zero, mm -hmm. the A6M Zero, and that was a light gray version. It's also tricky because it's, a lot of people think that it's a white color, but it's really light gray. So it's kind of in between white sure. and light gray. So our last version was light gray that Dan made. And a little bit different dimensionally, Dan's wingspan was longer. Mm -hmm. So with the A6M5 that was built in 1943, uh, otherwise, Dan's previous model, I believe, was the 1940 model. So they shortened the wings on this version, the A6M5 version, and now we're coming up with the dark green color scheme yeah. and a light gray underbelly and some cool yellow on here. So this is reminiscent of Dan's um, KI-84 uh, Frank sure. model. That was last year, I believe. It was another Japanese airplane. So it's Riding the coattails on that color scheme. Well, give, give them a look around this model. Let me. Yeah. So we updated some things printing-wise. So there's some cool printing oh, that yeah. we haven't had. Usually it's things that we would sticker. So this meatball on top, yep. for one thing. <laughs> That's printed on one tile. Yeah, and that is printing right there. <laughs> Generally we do stickers for that, but you found the right tile for that, so you really I wanted to use that. I found the right tile, and you want to know where I found that where tile? Where did you find that tile, Cody? <laughs> I found that in LEGO's non-military military kit, uh -oh. the, the Sop with Camel. Because LEGO doesn't do military. They do military. So, unless when they do. Unless they do. <laughs> um, so I thought that was funny that uh, we're building military models, and we used a piece that was only in that kit, only in the Sop with Camel kit. So. Yeah. So we printed on it, made it our own. Very cool. Other than that, we have printed exhaust on the side. It's yeah, puffy a nice printing texture on there. Uh, yeah, this is the first time I've actually seen that, so I thought that was kind of a nice detail. And we almost made a mistake. So Simon and I were talking about what we wanted for exhaust, and I just gave an image, a reference photo of right. the one side, and he was looking at the other side of the airplane when uh -oh. he was referencing, and he said, there's four. I said, well, no, there's three. <laughs> but that's how it is in real life. They're, Two stacks of uh, seven-cylinder radial engine stacks stacked together is 14. So it makes sense that there's three on one side, four on the other. And that's a detail that you didn't necessarily... Yeah, I, I didn't catch it. that for some reason. Right, that's so, kind of cool. That was cool. Cool note for that. So they're both puffy printed on, on the curved slopes there. I came up with a new uh, engine housing because it's... American planes, they have big engines. Right. They have stacks of nine cylinders, so it's 18 cylinders, so it's a much larger diameter. Um, like the Corsair, or the Helldiver, the Dauntless, mm -hmm. B-17s, things like that. They're pretty much all the same version of the engine, 18 cylinders at least. Uh, this is 14 cylinders, which like the German Focke-Wulf, makes it much smaller diameter. Yeah. So that's hard to build a circle, <laughs> a cylinder housing for right. that. So I came up with something a little bit different. Um, fairly simple to build, actually. Yeah. So you'll see when you open up the kit box. I, I like the... Uh, what are those um, jumper plates on the inside of that? Yeah. Um, uh, underneath the top underneath. or the slopes? Yes, yeah, sort of helps close the gap, but it's nice and sturdy and strong. And of course we have a reddish brown propeller on there. And if you look, if you can get that camera on the inside of that, it's almost some representations of some cylinders going on there. Yeah, it looks like a little something's going on. Yeah, a little something, some, some sort of engine thing going on. Yeah. Um, what else? Cool cockpit, that's a new design, right? Yeah, it's a new design. Um, kind of springboarding off of what Dan did on his last um, zero design. Sure. It's a little bit shorter. Obviously it's black instead of light gray. Um, so it's pretty simple cockpit design. There's some mm -hmm. cockpit details, just the classic Lego printed dashboard. Right. A couple gauges. There's also a joystick. <laughs> wow. Very so, cool. Very cool. Well, anything else on the model before we move into the figure? Um, I don't think so. Not really. Uh, retractable landing gear, of course. Yes. Just pretty simple, nice and sturdy. Folds up quite nicely. Oh, yeah. Right on. Um, represented machine guns here. Those are both 20 millimeter machine guns in the wings. Um, up on top of the cowling, there are 7.7 .7 millimeter machine guns. And that's something that's also been updated through the years. Um, 
Where adding, those adding be more at? machine guns. Um, they're right here, represented okay. right here. Sure. Just they're there. Represented. They're there. represented. <laughs> That's where they belong. It's they're, hard. They're it's pretty hard. recessed in real life. Yeah, so. they're recessed. It's really hard to see that there's anything there. Yeah. Um, and then I think their charging handles are actually inside the cockpit. Oh, cool. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, we have an all new custom minifigure that I put together for this uh, kit as well. Uh, minifigure artwork uh, based on pre some previous artwork that I've put together before. Um, this with some updates. Uh, you might notice that um, this color is a little bit interesting compared to um, maybe previous minifigures. Um, that's actually color shifted a little bit darker. Uh, I started out with dark tan. I don't know if you have a dark tan piece kicking around. Here we go, some dark tan. I don't know if you can see that for color comparison. Um, so I'm actually shifting that color a little bit darker to get closer to that real uniform color. Most, so many military uniforms are these weird shades of this, this olive drab color. Mm -hmm. Every country has a little bit different variance. Every, you know, depending on when the uniform was made, how long it was used, just, it's all over the place, so. It gives you more control over your right. color palette. Right, so uh, <laughs> a little bit of color shifting going on there, and you have that parachute harness. Um, boots and yeah he's cool just a simple figure um but lots of interesting stuff that i tried to add to it so oh yeah and the uh brick warriors aviator helmet yes brick warriors aviator helmet looks a lot like what they would wear so yeah. it, it fits pretty well right on. <laughs> cool yeah and so that's my addition to the kit so yeah, yeah. it's full 360 full 360 printed figure we don't typically do that in a lot of these smaller kits so yeah awesome very figure. exclusive I hope you think it's an awesome figure. I think it is. I'm happy with how it turned out. Oh yeah, awesome kid. No question about that. So, anything else? I, I don't think so. I gotta get back to work though. Okay. So absolutely, the internet's crashing. I see. Um, <laughs> so that is the all our all new zero designed by Cody Osell, uh, and that's here at his designer's desk. So thank you very much for watching. And for more information, Cody, where can they go? Not there. Not don't there. go there. Brickmania. <laughs> dot Brickmania. Com. Com. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Next time.